Right, what we have here is our Trail King Low Boy Stretch. Uh, these are trailer numbers 1228 and 1237. I want to show you a quick video on how to operate these. These trailers are relatively easy to operate, but we did make them a little different than the previous uh, ones we had. One of the features we did was we turned the engine around so that you can operate the choke and the fuel. And if you have a dead battery, you can also start it by having the pull cord. So I'm gonna hop up here and just show you how the engine starts. So we're gonna flip this up. And then right here's the fuel control. You want it facing to your right to turn the fuel on. You only want that on when you're using the engine. Uh, if you don't, uh, going down the road, the vibration can make the float stick. And what we've seen happen is it'll fill the crankcase with gas and it won't start, it'll foul the plug, you'll have a lot of issues. So once again, you only wanna turn that on when you're gonna use the engine. So you turn that on, and then on the side here is where the controls are. So you turn the key on, and then uh, this is the choke pulled out to start. You're gonna start it and then throttle it up, and then I'll show you how uh, to operate the neck. Make sure these are both locked in and you're good to go. So now we're going to show you how to stretch this unit. So I have the air applied. We're going to come back here. We're going to open this access door uh, on both sides. Now there's these little pins. I don't know if you can get in there and see the pins. So these are the pins. Uh, that way going down the road these don't pop out. So we're going to pull this pin. So there's a pin in the bottom. Pulls it straight out on both sides. Make sure these pins are out before you do anything. Uh, you set those to the side. Open this up. In here is your umbilical cord. So we did one single umbilical cord that hooks up here. So we're gonna unhook this before it stretches. That way there's no chance of damaging it once it starts coming out. So you just unhook it. These little uh, air fittings find the ball straight out. And uh, same thing opposite on this one. Okay, and you pull this through. Here's a little hanger in here. You pull it through, you set it in here. Now there's no way of damaging that. Now you come back here. Right here is the unlock button. You unlock that and the pin slides out. So I'll show you again. It's spring loaded, goes back in, out. Any questions, there's a procedure right here. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna stretch it and then I'll show you some other features. Okay, now that we have the trailer stretched out, uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna find one of these notches along here. So when you get close to the point you wanna be stretched at, you take the uh, switch and you switch the lock. These will automatically return and then you just move the trailer back and forth until you find the positive lock that goes in there. And that's when you wanna make sure they're, in, they're both engaged, you drop your safety pin in there with the cotter pin on the bottom. Uh, now you take these lines, once again we put them in here, so we're going to pull them out, and this is one cord, whether you're stretched out 2 feet or 15 feet, same cord. So it stays in there, uh, you run it through this little hanger here, 
and you hook it up just like we unhooked it. Now the key feature on this is we had these little metal hooks in here. So the, the hoses will sit in these hooks and they're meant for the hose. Uh, you probably want to run a bungee strap or some type of tie wrap up here because going down the road there's a possibility that that vibrates out. The uh, reason we did that was we didn't want several airlines in the rails like the previous trailers. So we did one umbilical cord. Uh, and then to close the trailer, you just do the opposite. You take this cord back out. Um, you know, into any excess you have to, you can put up there. But you take it out, you put it back away. Do the opposite, pull the safety pins, let the big close pins, and then back up. One additional feature we made on this trailer was this last two feet right here is removable. Uh, right now, the trailer is over 48 feet. If you have a state where there's kingpin laws, you could remove this, set it up on top of here or there, close the trailer fully, and you have a 48 foot trailer that's legal in all kingpin states. Uh, what is unique about this, and it's actually a good feature, is if you have a long load, right, you have two rails with no rail support. You can pull the pins out of this, um, it's kind of hard to see because it's down in there, but it's similar. Got a lock pin, and these are actually in backwards, but that's okay. And you have these pins, one on each side. Now, with your crane or however you're loading your piece, you just ask your crane operator if he will move this. On this side, there's a triangle on the side. Um, these are not meant for tie down. Right here, you don't want to tie to that, you want to tie to this. Uh, but basically, you would hook here and there, and this will lift up, and you can put it anywhere along this rail. Those pins will go into here. So if you have this trailer extended, and you have a piece you need center support on, you can put it right here. And it really is a good feature um, on, for tying it down, and it works well. Okay, so the, we have the lines hooked up, like I showed you, you want to put them there. Now this particular thing here, I noticed, I wanted to point it out, this obviously was damaged at one time. So it either drug the ground or stretched it with everything hooked up. So very important that you take care of this cord. Um, that way you don't have issues like this. Okay, a few features on the rear, uh, mainly the suspension, but also the strobe lights. These trailers were built with strobe lights. Uh, these two orange, they are turn signals, they are strobe lights. If your tail lights are on, this switch over here will turn them on and off. So as long as your tail lights are on, you turn those on, the strobe should work, which makes it really nice. Uh, last part here is the suspension. So in addition uh, to having the front gooseneck be able to adjust the height, uh, especially if you're stretched out and you have a railroad track or another high crown, you can raise the rear suspension. Uh, right here is a cable, and this is for the adjustable ride height. This is runs off the leveling valve, so this is for normal operating. Uh, you push it all the way in for the lowest, and you pull it all the way out to raise. Uh, once again, if you're going to go down the road like that, that's fine. You just need to make sure you compensate uh, your load for that high. Um, if there is a part where you need to get over something and you need to do manually or manually dump for when you're loading and unloading, you always want to make sure the suspension is fully dropped. These are the controls here. So when you, when you push, it's in auto, so it's operating off the leveling valve. When you pull, that is manual. So what you would do is you would pull. Uh, if you push this in, it's going to dump the air. When you put it to the center, it holds it at that position. And then when you pull it all the way out, it raises. So let me show you. I'm going to pull it so it dumps. So you hear the air dumping right away. That's going to completely drop the suspension. As I mentioned, that's for loading, unloading, uh, parking the trailer for the night, that type of thing. You want to make sure the brakes are also released when you do this because as the suspension goes down, it's going to roll. Um, if you want to stop, you put it in that center and it stops there. And then as uh, I mentioned, to raise this, for getting over an obstacle in the road, you pull that. You do not want to go down the road uh, with the suspension all the way raised. So pull this, it goes up, we might be out of air, uh, but you never want to go down the road with it in manual. You want to operate with the adjustable leveling valve. Last feature, uh, it has a gauge. So when this thing is in um, the, the push, the auto, and it's running off this, 
when you have your load in there, it's going to register your gauge and it's going to tell you right here on the sticker. So you know how much weight is on the axles based on your gauge. So these are pretty, pretty accurate, not 100% accurate, but very close. So those are some tools you can use to help you with this trailer. Uh, it's a very nice unit. Once again, we did some additional things to try to make them more reliable. So it's different than our order, but I hopefully you'll be pleased with them. If you have any questions, feel free to call uh, the garage here. Uh, we have a manual that has pictures and explains in depth the capabilities and the sizes of the trailer. So be sure to ask for that. Give us a call if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.